In today's episode, we're going to talk about flavor, we're going to talk about taste, we're going to talk about senses, and I am going to paint my tongue blue just to prove a point. But before all of that, I need to go and check on Bia. That's what I am doing right now. This is why we are in the car, because I needed to bring some parts over, check on the progression, see what's happening, and see when I can come back and work on it. So, well, let's go. Wow. So the bike build is underway, everything is going according to plan. It's going to be a tight timeline, but I think we're going to be able to present it on the 4th of June at the Lisbon Motorcycle Film Fest, the link is underneath. And as far as we're concerned, well... Okay, I'm now free from the shackles of the four wheels, so we're back on. Before we dive into tea and wine, we first need to address the basics. We first need to understand what influences how we taste. So we have five senses. We have smell, we have sight, we have taste, we have feel and we have hearing. When I show you this, can you hear the bread crack? Can you hear the wine being poured? Can you see the colors of the food? Can you imagine how the cheese will feel when it melts in your mouth? The smell and the aromas of the herbs and the olive oil? All of this will influence and be a part of your final taste. Because taste is a contact experience. Until you put it in your mouth, you don't know exactly how it's going to taste. There's five tastes. We have sweet, we have sour, we have bitter, we have salty, and we have umami. Umami is a little bit more complicated to explain, so let's associate it with soy sauce. Soy sauce is extremely rich in umami. Salt and sugary, or salt and sweet if you prefer, those are easy, those everyone know. But when it comes to sour, that sourness, what is the sour? The sour is something that's not yet ripe. Although we do like our sourness. And when it comes to bitterness, well, bitter is something that usually is associated with poisonous. But we still like our bitterness. But what influences all of this? There's your patient history, anything that happened to your body that might have changed your taste buds. You have your anatomy and you have your genetics. Let's make this test. Grab a little bit of food coloring, blue, Paint your tongue and with a little bit of paper with the size of a punch hole, put it on, grab a magnifying glass, grab a light and count the white dots. Those white dots will be your taste buds. And then you can know if you are a super taster, if you are a normal taster or if you taste a little bit below average. And that influences. I grew up in countryside Portugal, surrounded by vineyards, surrounded by wines. And for years it was very confusing for me when someone grabbed the glass and smelled it and tasted it and described it in a way that I couldn't understand. It took me years of practice to actually understand that. And still, I'm not as keen as other people because I'm a normal taster. And if I'm comparing one wine between me, a normal taster, and him, a super taster, he's gonna be able to pick up completely different things. Practice makes perfect. So if you do practice more, you will be able to get more out of it. But do not forget, there's something called taste empathy. So as far as we're concerned, and as far as the basics go, I would love to hear your questions. I would love to hear if you are a super taster or not. Please comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.